it is going to be good. It's going to be fattening for the soul. And I'm excited. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. And so at this time, to introduce our speaker to us, I'd oh, like to turn over to Sarah. <laughs> she will be doing the introduction of our speaker, after which Brother Robert Bailey will give us our meditation. And after the meditation, the next voice you'll hear will be that of our speaker okay. for the afternoon. Thank you. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It's a humbling privilege this morning to introduce to you our lovely sister who is about to bring to us the word of life. Her name is Madish Mars Francois. She is a native of Haiti, which is located in the Caribbean. Professionally, she is an efficient patient advocate. She is a graduate from John Jay Criminal Justice and, and she obtained a Bachelor of Heart in Public Administration. Then she, was, then she also attended Fordham University and graduated with a Master of Science in Nonprofit Leadership. Above all of this, that she have achieved, she is a woman of God. A passionate prayer warrior, a medical missionary, a chaplain and an experienced Bible worker. Currently she is studying theology at Andrews University Theological Seminary. God has laid on our heart a message for us today. Please give her your undivided attention and breathe a word of prayer as she present this life-saving message to us. I present to you Evangelist Francois. Amen. I will serve thee because I love thee. You have given life to me. I was nothing before you found You have given life to me. Heart aches, broken pieces, ruined lives are wide. You died on Calvary, your touch was what I longed for, you have given life to me. I will serve you, Lord, because I love you. Over the years, you have done so much, so much for me. I was nothing before you found me. And I want to thank you today for making that sacrifice not only for me but for your people thank you for giving life to me Heartaches, broken pieces ruined lives are wise Died on Calvary 
Was what I long for. You have given life to me. See your time, sis. Unmute your mic. Please unmute. Unmute. Thank you. Thank you, Sister D. I immensely thank Sister Sharon Greer. I hope I say it right. For the, inv the invitation. I am very humble to this. Whenever it is an occasion to stand where I don't really belong, it's the spot where God is standing to speak to you. But he'll use me because he's invisible. I salute you with a cordial salutation, with love and sincerity. I praise God for the opportunity to be here. And I will always, always, Give him his place in my heart and also being here in his presence while I am going to speak. I praise God for who he is and for what he has been doing for each one of his children. Happy Sabbath to each and every one of you, wherever you find yourself on the globe, on the Zoom. I praise God, even though churches are not open fully yet, but we can still praise the Lord. We can still, still gather together on the Zoom and still worship Him because He's worthy. He's worthy to be praise. I appreciate the songs. Since morning, I connect and I enjoy everything, Sabbath school and everything that was happening. My heart is warm and I praise the Lord. I don't feel, I don't feel that I'm a stranger because I am home. <laughs> I'm home and I'm with you in the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord for that. Today is the day that the Lord has made, the Sabbath of the Lord. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, let us rejoice and be glad in it. You may ask me why, with everything that's going on, why should I be glad? And I'll tell you, you have to be glad because you're among the livings, right? You have to be glad because you are healthy. You have to be glad because you are in God's presence right now. You have to be glad because he called you. He called you, you, have, you are his child and you are special to him. So there are many, many reasons to be glad to be in his presence. We praise the Lord for that. 
I'm going to put it in there with her. Worshipping you, giving you the glory that you alone deserve. At this time, Lord, I am decreasing so that you increase. Your children are ready. They are sitting at the table, waiting to hear your voice, waiting to hear what you have to give them, to instruct them, to allow them to live here with something new, something that you alone can give them. You know, each one of them. Father, please speak to your children. They are listening. We pray with the forgiveness of our sins in Jesus' name. And we pray and thank you for your presence here. Brothers and sisters, the book of Daniel, chapter 7, describes four animals coming out of the sea. What did Daniel's vision represent? And what does it mean to us, to you, to me, to all of us? What's in it? We can find out because there's a prophecy there which presents also the explanation. Daniel had a vision, a very strange vision. Uh, Sister Francois says, if you face us, we can hear you better. When you turn away from us, we're not hearing clearly. Sorry, I'm fixing this. That's all right. Take your time. We don't want to miss a word. Well, there's something at the screen. That's better. Yes. <clears throat> Daniel had a vision a very strange vision during the first year of the reign of King Belshazzar in the year 556 and 555. The vision had to do with major empires and world events to occur between and time and the second coming of Jesus Christ. When I mention the second coming of Jesus Christ, I know you are familiar to, to hear that because we all are waiting for that day when Jesus will come. So from Daniel's time throughout history, this is the prophecy that's been following, occurring in different empires. That's what's going on. The prophecies of Daniel, they are fulfilled. They are fulfilled. So about 50 years after Daniel interpreted the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, he had a prophetic dream that covered the sweep of history from Daniel's time to the end. The prophecy with its interpretation added some important details which are not found in Nebuchadnezzar's dream, which contribute to our understanding of the character of the Most High and the way the rule he rules in the kingdom of men. Like Daniel chapter two, Daniel chapter seven predicted four great kings and kingdom 
in Daniel 7, verse 17, which was determined by God's eternal kingdom. In Daniel 7, the explicit emphasis is on the benefit to God's people who would receive the kingdom of this world. This is very interesting because we are God's people. We are God's children. And when it mentioned that there's emphasis on benefit to God's people, we know we're gonna enjoy that part. We're gonna be part of it. The holy people of the Most High will receive the kingdom and will possess, will possess the kingdom forever. Because God, he offered to all who desire eternal life. That's what he offers, whoever accepts him, whoever's walking with him, whoever's serving him, he promised that he'll give you eternal life, which different from having this life that we know right now, which is like 80 years old or maximum 180, 120. It's not comparable to eternal life. As in Daniel chapter two, Daniel chapter seven portrays a transformation of the fourth earthly empire, which is the strongest. However, whereas in Daniel two, the fourth kingdom is only wicked and divided according to verse 41 and 43. In Daniel 7, a different power represented by a horn that start out little arises from the fourth empire. Brethren, this is interesting because this little horn power has a religious agenda. It arrogantly affronts God by speaking against faithful people for a specific period named three and three and a half time. The biggest new element introduced in Daniel 7 is an awesome divine judgment that precede the destruction of human rule and transfer of power to God and his people. Brothers and sisters, Daniel 7 presents a pre-advent judgment. Daniel 7 explicitly interprets its symbolism as presenting of Daniel and move into the future. Those great beasts, which represent four kings, four kings and kingdom. Follow me closely. Since the sweep of history from Daniel's time to the end is continuous, it must include our time. It must include our time right now, the 21st century. That means we must pay attention. We must closely watch what's going on. We must follow the prophecies to see exactly how it's unfolding. I mean that this prophecy concerns us 21st century, us children of God. It is from Daniel's time to the end. This is not my own interpretation, brethren. This Bible present and also explain itself. Daniel's prophecies are fulfilled. You may find that an identified little on power is still here and God's pre-advent judgment may be going on right now. 
you may be faced with a choice for God or for his enemy. This choice will fix your eternal destiny as determined in the judgment compared to Revelation 13, chapter 14, where the people, they were deceived because they were waiting for something that already passed and they didn't pay attention to that. If you keep this by looking in the past or if you are looking further in future for what is really present, you may be unprepared to make the right choice with regard to him. As a result, you may face consequences that you would rather avoid, to say the least. How do we identify the power represented by the little all? Remember, it's four beasts and then one little all. In order to identify the little horn, allow me to trace the succession of four earlier kingdoms, which are parallel to four kingdoms in Daniel 2. In order to understand Daniel chapter 7, we have to mention also what had happened in chapter 2, where there was a statue and that represented a different empires, different kings. For Daniel chapter seven, it presented with four beasts, four animals, different from the status. But the animal, they were not really well known to, to Daniel. Because Daniel, that's why he said that he felt so strange and he was grieving in chapter 15 it says here i daniel was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body and the vision of my head troubled me so this is daniel speaking right there because he did not understand what was going on in the, in the dream, the vision that he had. The first animal in Daniel 7 is a lion. It corresponds to the gold head in Daniel 2. Daniel identified this animal as representing Nebuchadnezzar, who was king in Neo-Babylonian kingdom. Second animal, in Daniel 7, it was a lopsided bear. It corresponds to the silver chest and arm in Daniel 2, which represent the empire that supersedes Babylon. This was the combined kingdom of Media and Persia, which conquered, conquered Babylon in 539 BC. The third animal was a leopard, which corresponds to the belly and thigh of bronze in Daniel chapter two, verse 32. It must represent the Macedonian Greek empire of the Alexander the Great, who conquered Media and Persia before his untimely death in 323 BC at age of 32 four wings and heads of the leopard when agreed with the fact that after Alexander's death, his empire split into four Hellenistic kingdoms. His four generals, they were in charge. There were some frictions among them, but after the death of Alexander the Great, the, the kingdom split. There remain the four kingdoms symbolized in iron lead in Daniel chapter two, verse 32, and by a powerful monster with iron and teeth 
and 10 on in Daniel 7, verse 7. The feet and toes of iron and clay stand for a divided kingdom. Again, secular history testified to the accuracy of the prophecy. In the fifth century AD, the Western Roman Empire was taken over by General Germanic tribes, which power superseded the four Greek kingdom. Common feature of iron left the two representations four Greek kingdoms imperial Rome, which was the strongest, most impressive, and most enduring of all four empires. While contemplating the horns, behold, another horn, a little one, came up among them. And three of the first horn were pulled out by the woods before it. And behold, this horn possessed eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth uttering great boasts. Daniel looked at 10 horns. This implied that the religiously oriented little horn was to arise from the division of imperial Rome. The church of Rome, which arose at the expense of some Germanic tribal nations that had taken over part of the Roman Empire. Three horns uprooted before the little horn and which dominated Europe during the Middle Ages. Now let's see, that was the prophecy. Let's see how little horn versus holy ones. The pre advent judgment in Daniel 7 accomplished two things. First, it condemned the religious leader of power. Second, it ruled in favor of God's two followers, called holy ones of the most high, who received the kingdom of this world under the lordship of the one like the Son of Man. Of the Most High. These are opposing parties, as shown by the fact that the little horn persecuted the Holy One. Brethren, the big question regarding the judgment is to whom does the dominion of this world rightfully belong? To whom the dominion of this world rightfully belong. The verdict states it belongs to the holy ones because the little horn loses. In the judgment, the court was seated. Our Bible indicates Daniel 7 verse 10. The book that was opened in the judgment as dealing exclusively with the sin of the little horn power. In linking the three sins of verses 19 to 14, is the verdict resulting from the investigation, verse 9 and 10, that wipes out the little horn power and gives the one like a son of man an eternal kingdom. The one like a son of man is a heavenly person, like a human being whose coronation takes place in heaven. When we read this part, it indicates it indicate the son of man. Who you, do you think or who do you know is the son of man who is a heavenly person? You know, this is Jesus. 
It's none other than Jesus. Jesus Christ is our Savior. He is representing us. He is our priesthood in heaven. But he's not going to carry this title. He has to change because that's why there's a judgment that has to happen. The judgment results in the demise of the little horn and God's grip of dominion to his holy ones, who is the context of human beings who have accepted the lordship of God and the one like a son of man. Brothers and sisters, the one like a son of man must be Christ, our beloved Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer. He has divine attributes and control an eternal kingdom that is identified as the kingdom of God in Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. And yet, the ancient of days gives him his power. So he is distinct and from God the Father. Jesus frequently referred to himself as the Son of Man. Matthew chapter 8, verse 20. Also, chapter 9, verse 6, chapter 10, verse 23. All these verses will prove where Jesus was speaking and refer to himself as the son of man, hereby identifying himself with the messianic one like a son of man in Daniel 7 verse 7. When Jesus Christ called himself son of man, he was emphasizing his humanity in contrast to his own divinity. The most unusual thing about himself is that is the fact that he has joined the human race combining human nature with his original and basic divinity what is our take in this prophecy what is the message what is God saying to you, my sisters? What is he saying to you, my brothers, and to myself? Jesus is coming. We have been expecting him. Many of God's servitors, followers in the past, they were waiting for Jesus. But now they, they are waiting until he comes because they've been no longer existent. We are, this is our time now. And we heard in the reading that this prophecy concerns our time. It concerns us. So we have to make a decision. If it concerns us, what do we have to do? When do we start? Where are we right now? Where are we in the prophecy? As we can see, Daniel, who had experience with God. He had challenges. You know the story about when he was led in the furnace and also in the lion den. But God intervened and saved him. God has always been available to save human beings particularly when his child called for help, he's always, always willing to help. And as we know, both stories, in these two occasions, Daniel was saved. He and his friends were saved. Now, after that experience, the challenges, that's when he received the vision. The vision that started to happen at this, this time when he was alive and continues on until now and beyond if, he doesn't, if Jesus doesn't return while we are living now. Jesus 
imminent coming is a reality. We have to prepare ourselves. We have to decide what side we're gonna be. If we're gonna be with Jesus, if gonna, we're gonna walk with him, abide in him, and to, for him to take us with him when he's going home, because he's preparing a place for you and for me. A place where your name will be written on your chair. Nobody would say, excuse me, that's my chair. No, no, nothing, nothing like that. Everybody who accepts him, everybody who's faithful to him, who's serving him, will have the opportunity to sit at the table with him, to admire his face. But until that happens, we have to do some preparation. We have to be in tune with him. We have to be on the same page with him. So how do we do that? The best way we can do that is to communicate with him, is to create or to establish a friendship with him, to be his close friend, to read his words, which is found in scripture, the Bible. When you read the Bible, by reading it, you become transformed like Jesus. And he says that we'll do more than he used to do when he was on earth. Because you know why? It's because before he left the earth, he promised to give us his Holy Spirit. He promised. He said, I have to go. If I don't go, I cannot send it to you. And he did send the Holy Spirit to assist us, to help us, to convict us when we sin so that we can come to him. Acknowledge our weakness. Acknowledge that we are nothing except for his blood, his justice that covers us. Acknowledge who he is and who we are facing his holiness. He's powerful. As you know, he is omniscient because he knows everything. He is omnipotent. He can do whatever he wants to be. You know, he is omnipresent. He is everywhere at the same time. He is unlimited. There's nothing our God cannot do. So this is very important right now to decide what side you're gonna be. It's, it's only two parties. It's Jesus' side and his enemy. You know, he is right now being very busy. The enemy, we have an enemy that we have in, in common because he doesn't like you, he doesn't like me. He's trying to keep people away from God. He's putting a lot of distraction so that he can keep your mind away so that you don't think about the Bible. You don't think about the goodness of God. You don't think about the love of God. You don't think, and he's telling you, such, such lies that God doesn't love. God is not going to take you to heaven. It's not going to happen. He's going to make a lot of lies and trying to come present them to you like he did at the time of Eve. How he seduced her and put us all in this predicament that we are because we inherit the sin that Eve and Adam they, they, when they disobey God and ate the fruit. So brethren, we have to decide today what side. It's not, even if you don't see anything's happening, but something is happening because we have a world crisis that we are facing. Many people now are dis very discouraged. Many people are crying. Many people don't know what to do. Many people are afraid of the uncertain. Why? Especially those people who never read the Bible, who don't know the truth about Jesus, about the love of God, about the plan of redemption. Those people, they are perplexed. They don't know where to go, who to call, what to do, what to say. 
We all heard how many people died prematurely. They didn't know they were gonna die in that fashion. And we heard this month, in fact, I heard the 15th, which is tomorrow. They said that the, the second vague will start. Start from where? We don't know. How many people will die? We don't know. But one thing we know, what we don't know, God knows. What we cannot do, he can. And he has, he has the last say. He has the last word. He can speak and things happen. Besides, he, he didn't create things with his hands. You know that. God spoke and created things. The two things he made with his hands. One, he created Adam and Eve. And then he wrote, he wrote the 10 words, the 10 commandments twice because it was broken once. He asked Moses to present a second marble table to write it and he wrote it twice. This is to tell us how important the 10 commandment is. We should appreciate it. We should read it. We should apply it. We should observe it. And because this is part of God's character. Why God give us prophecies? Why are we studying prophecies? Because in that, the prophecies, there's a message for us that if we know it, it's going to be beneficial for us. But people who don't know it won't know what it is. In order to understand it, to know it, one thing we need is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit knows God's heart and mind. So he can guide us daily so that we can do what God desires for us to do. We cannot do it on our own. It's only God that can provide us with the Holy Spirit that can be manifested in us to show us things that we don't know, to help us do things that we would never do if it wasn't for the grace of God. So my sisters, my brothers, all of you friends of Jesus, judgment is real. But we, the children of God, we don't have to be scared of it. No, 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 no. Don't be fearful of the judgment because as long as you are working with God, it's not bad news for you. It's bad news for those who are not working with him. Those who reject him. Those who doesn't see God for who he is. Those are the people who should be concerned about it. But as long as you are abiding his word, you are following his footsteps, what he asks you to do. You communicating with him. You do your de devotion. You praying. You have faith. And judgment doesn't have to scare you in any way. The judgment, you know who's going to be the judge. It's your friend. That's why you need to develop friendship with him right now. Not when you're going to be facing the judgment. It's now, today, this moment, while you're hearing this message. If you didn't do it yet, this is the time. This is why I'm sent to tell you. This is the time. We don't know when it's coming. As you see, everything that's going on, prophecies accomplishing, fulfilling, left and right. But the day is coming, he didn't tell us. He will appear. Like the, oh, those people, 200 something, I don't remember the, the number exactly, 200 something people who died, they didn't know. And they say many more will die. Where do we stand right now? If we were among those people who died, in what fashion would we be presented to before God? If we were among those, those people who passed away, due to Corona. God knows best. God is a very intelligent God, a very loving God. He knows we were not ready. So that's why today he gives us a chance to put ourselves in the path that he has for us to follow. To follow what he wants us to do, to make our things right with him. 
He gave us a second chance. He's a second chance God. He gave us the time. We cannot say we didn't know, we didn't hear it because he will come anyway. He will do what he has to do. The judgment result in the demise of the little horn and God grant of the little one who in this context are human beings who have accepted the Lordship of God and the one like a son of man. Brothers and sisters, the one like a son of man must be Christ, our beloved Lord Jesus. He has divine attributes. He is in control. He is with his father. If we deny him right now, he will deny us before his father. That's what he says. But we don't want to be where he's not. Because if you are, you find yourself where Jesus is not, that's a problem. It's best to be with him. Where well, just everything is going right now. You are with Jesus. You are his follower. You are his child, his friend. That's the best thing you can do for yourself. That's the best thing you can encourage your family, your children, your spouse, your mother, your parents, your friends, your neighbor, your colleague at work or at school. We can encourage them. Tell them the time is now, not later. Don't postpone it. Because if we postpone, we don't know what's going to happen, what day, what minute, what second it will appear to us. Let's figure that we, we are very blessed people. We are blessed people by God. Christians fear the judgment in part because they not only deliver those who are loyal to God, but also those who condemn the disloyal one. There's two sides of it, loyal one and disloyal one. You have to find yourself in the loyal one to be faithful with God and walk with him as he expects you to. My sisters and brothers, do not be afraid of judgment. Walk with him. God is faithful. It is very important to study. It's very important to study the Bible and to remain in prayer it more now, more frequently now than we used to do before. The characteristic of that God approve those who are seeking his face, seeking his presence. What greater character with friends could you have than one from Jesus Christ? He is our example. Confidence of access to God. Because Christ died on the cross for us, we have access to speak to the Father. How? Because remember, Jesus, he taught the disciple how to pray. How did he say? Say, our Father. When he prayed himself, he said, our father. So Jesus called God his father. He gave us access. We can God call God our father. So we have access. We have confidence that God is there. Psalm 93 verse 3. Psalm 93 verse 3. Psalm 93 We can read what it says of, about God's fairness. God will not judge you for something you're not, you're not at fault. He would not take someone who's just and punish. No, that's not his character. God judge with equity. His justice and fairness are the base of his throne. Confidence in the imminence of Christ's return. And also confidence because God is always with us. In Matthew 28 verse 20. He says, I'm with you always until the end. This is a guarantee we have. Guarantee. This, this, this statement from God never erased from the Bible. That means he maintained it. 
and he's with you. As long as you believe it, you call on him, you'll feel his presence, even though you cannot touch him, but you'll feel his presence. Brothers and sisters, if we are with Jesus, we have nothing to fear. Absolutely nothing. While waiting for Jesus to come, seek his commitments. Keep his commitments and the faith in him that he would expect us to do. Yes, brothers and sisters, as you are perplexed, you have issues, you have personal issues, uh, you are uncertain about life, but your life is in God's hands. Remember that? It's not in your hand. You cannot do anything for yourself. What you cannot do for yourself, he'll do for you. He'll provide it for you on due time. Satan knows. He knows that he is busy working to distract Christians, to decrease their faith in God. But God promised he will never, he would not let anybody take us away from him. Because in Romans 8, he described how much he loved, how deep, how profound his love for us and each one of us. We have to believe in that love he has for us. No one ever loved us like he does. And he gave his own begotten son to die on the cross for us. This proof, there's nothing comparable to that. No one ever loved you as he does. No one can do for you what he did. So to God be the glory. To God be honored. To God is everything we can do to honor him, to appreciate, to love, and adore him. That's what we can offer. We can offer our hearts and also ourselves, our being, for his service. To utilize us to speak on his behalf. To let people know how good he is. And if they don't come right now to taste his goodness, it may be too late. Because if they don't know, they, can, they cannot do it. If they don't hear it, how are they going to learn it? That's what the Bible says. So to, in conclusion, we have to be motivated to let people know where we having an appointment. Jesus is coming, but we have to be ready. We have to be ready. And we have to start being ready now, this minute, this second that we hear. Because we, the question will be, didn't you hear that? That day when this Nadesh was talking? I was talking to you then. Don't mind the accent. Don't mind the way it comes out. Don't mind the distraction. Take what belongs to you, what you feel your heart can accept. Disregard everything else. Because what's important is what the Lord wanted you to hear. I didn't call to come here. I didn't ask to come. But you know what? It's bigger than Sister Sharon. It's bigger, bigger than me. What happened? What's happening right now? It's beyond my understanding. And I just accept it. I humble myself. I accept it. Just drop down whatever doesn't belong to you from this, from the little bit you catch and take what you think you can work with that can make a transformation in your life, whatever it may be, for goodness sake and for your life's sake. As we are adding, I would like to ask if there's anyone who feel that you need to respond to God's love once more, is extending his love, is extending his offer to have eternal life. It's going to be two parties. You have to select right now which party you're going to stand with, either the Lord or the enemy common that we have. So the time is now to do it. The kingdom of God is for you and for me, but he cannot just put you in it without your consent, without your willingness to go. That's why we need to do our best. 
and do what we have to. God offers you eternal life where there's no suffering, no illness, no death, no misery, no stress. It's going to be victory. You see, now you have the, your team like victory in Jesus. You have it when you have Jesus. You have the victory. It's in your hand. But when you have eternal life, it's going to be victory for life. But start enjoying as you're enjoying it now. Victory in Jesus. It sounds great. It sounds awesome. But when you are experimenting it, you're free with Jesus. That's when you really have the victory. So compare, he gives you eternal life compared to a life of 80 years old, 100 something. People don't live 900 years anymore. You know that. But if you choose him now, you guaranteed eternal life where there won't be anything negative that will bother you. So you can choose today. Wherever you are, you can, because you've been sitting for a while, you can get up and say, God, I stand to tell you, I would like to be on your side with you. Please sign my name. God, I am with you. Or you can raise your hand. If you can't stand up, raise your hand to indicate. And the, the heaven is taking note of your decision. It's in your heart, but the Lord knows your heart and your thinking. So if you want to do that, my sister will sing the song appropriate for this call right now. You have a minute to thank. Thank God for who he is in your life, for sparing your life from the pandemic. And now we're going to ask him to cover you again with his blood, with the blood of Christ. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Let sister sing the song and then we pray to dismiss. Your mic is muted.
I have an anchor, I'm very sure, I'm very sure, my anchor holds and grips the solid wall. This rock is Jesus, yes, he's the one, this rock is Jesus, the only one, be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips the solid road. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sisters. The vision of Daniel 7 could not conclude with better news than this. The reign, dominion, and the greatness of all, of all, shall be to the people of God. When you say people of God, it's you and me, the scent of the Most High. His reign is an everlasting reign and all rulers will serve and obey him. According to Daniel 7 verse 27, prophecy ends with the revelation that Christ will establish the kingdom of God on earth and give it to the scent of the Most High. Isn't that great news? He is coming. Are we ready? If he comes today, tonight, tomorrow, will we be ready? That's what we have to think. Once we accept to go on his side with him, so we know we don't have to be afraid of the judgment. That's the takeaway from this. It's, it's good news. Good news for us. Let us God to give us the Holy Spirit. Let ask him to give us the fruit of the Spirit. Let ask him to increase our faith in him. Let ask him to guide our path and mind so that we, he, we stay with him during our, our pilgrims on earth. Thank you for your listen for listening. I'm gonna say prayer, then somebody so someone else will do the benediction. Is that how we do it? Go ahead and pray, sir. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the Sabbath day. You gathered us on this Zoom so that we can hear your voice and fellowship with each other and with you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your Holy Spirit among us. We are praying right now for your children who have been here since morning, who hear this message. Some of them may be understood, some of them may not. But whatever it is, Lord, you know best how you can have your spirit translate for them what was not understood so they can comprehend to take side with Jesus because this is the time to do so, not later. Bless them, bless their mind, their heart, bless their families, keep them safe, Lord, guide them, guide their path, their mind, allow them, Lord, to receive your blessing, the, the Sabbath blessing now and continue to bless them in their lives, each and everyone on the line. We pray for them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Evangelist Francois. Before we break out into our prayer rooms, and if you're visiting us for the first time, at this time we usually um, gather in a different room uh, for prayer. So our technician will move you to that room. You don't have to do anything. And in that room, there'll be somebody waiting there to pray with you. If you have a prayer request, 
uh, go ahead, open your mics at that time and let your prayer request be known. Also, there are the decision cards in the chat. If you have not yet signed the decision card and you have heard a message today that has pierced your heart, you have heard the voice of the Lord calling you and you are ready to respond to his voice, uh, sign those decision cards. Maybe you just need someone to pray with you. Maybe you need a call from one of us to just have someone to talk to. Whatever it is, fill out those forms and someone will get in touch with you. Before we go into our prayer room, we want to say goodbye to our listeners, our, our viewers on YouTube and on Facebook Live. Thank you once again for joining us. And we're looking forward to having you tomorrow night. At this time, we'll go into our prayer rooms and then we come back here to the main platform for closing exercises. <laughs>